drugs, rock and roll. And not necessarily in that order. Rock stars live hard and party even harder. This was the life for the members of Motley Crue until it led bassist Nikki Six to celebrity near-death experience number three. Motley Crue in the 1980s were the biggest thing to hit music. On December 22nd, 1987, um, they were in the middle of their world tour for Girls, Girls, Girls. The Hollywood thing. <laughs> And Nikki was coming back into Los Angeles, and he had $1,000 worth of heroin and crack and, uh, and a case of Cristal waiting in his, his silver limousine when he got picked up from LAX. Nikki headed to the Franklin Plaza Hotel in Hollywood. The hotel was a haven for the raunchiest rockers of the day. He was never into just kind of, you know, Motley Crue just kind of being full on. I mean, we were like all the way. 100%. Hard drugs, lots of sex, lots of rock and roll, more drugs, more sex. Well, when you're talking Motley Crue, um, you know, drug use goes hand in hand. Nikki was as high as he'd ever been. All or nothing, man. Yeah. If you become addicted to something, then you're addicted to it. You know, like Nikki was addicted to heroin. For somebody to be that loaded and still be shooting up, well, then they're that close to Odin and die. The last shot took Nikki down. Nikki turned blue, and they knew that they had a problem. Um, they called 911. He was in the ambulance. When the ter person turns blue, then there's no oxygen going to the brain. And you're already almost past the point of no return. Part of them really wanted to die, especially for a, for an excessive heroin user. The dancing with death is a daily dance. The rock star was declared dead on the way to the hospital. In a situation of an overdose, uh, the overdose can actually cause the heart to stop. We need to get the heart started again. One determined medic plunged two shots of adrenaline into the rock star's heart. Multiple shots of adrenaline helped the heart to get started again. Nikki's life was saved. He opened his eyes and saw the two massive needles sticking out of his chest. Then he passed out again. The next time Nikki opened his eyes, he was in a hospital bed. Six ripped out his IV and left Cedar Sinai wearing only a pair of leather pants. Came back home. Changed his answering machine to say, hey, Rich Nicky, I'm not home because I'm dead. And then he started doing heroin again the same night. All they care about is getting that fix because they feel so horrific when they come out of the coma. So the first thing they're going to do is go get more drugs. The band's manager found Nicky passed out with a needle sticking out of his arm and covered in his own blood. It was time for a change. They called a meeting, and they all decided to go into rehab together. That's probably one of the only ways to really get sober, because by doing it as a group, everybody is in the same ballpark. They're all dealing with the same issues. Within months, the band was back to making music. Nikki's near-death experience inspired the crew hit, Kickstart My Heart. These days, Six is clean and sober. He recounted his descent into drug addiction in his book, The Heroin Diaries. There's a lot of graphic images in the book, really literally, like, showing the darkness, um, the very dark side of Nikki. This is one rocker who lived fast and died young, then came back to tell the tale. Yeah, you think about being from there to here, and it's, it's quite a journey.